Alright guys, I want to thank you all for coming back for some more of The Great Ace Attorney 2. So, we just recently took care of the investigation in terms of uh, finding out some more things to help out with... What's his name? Sasaki's trial? And now, we're about to hit off with part 2. So I hope you all continue to enjoy watching. Now let's get this started. Alright guys, and we're back. 23rd of February, 9.23 a.m., the Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. Whoa, that's a face. This is it then, Mr. Narahodo. Yes, it's time to put an end to this now. To the miserable curse that has been plaguing Mr. Natsume. To everything. And in my own small way, I shall do everything I can to help you. I always appreciate your help, Mr. Sato. Suffering! Soseki! Selfishly! Sadlined! Ah! Good morning to you too, Mr. Natsume. Good morning! Good morning, welcome student, Mr. Narahodo Esquire! Listen to you two, chatting away happily as if the main player of today's trial isn't here! Why would you do that? Why? Oh dear, we didn't mean to cause offense, Mr. Natsume. I thought perhaps that because you had your eyes shut so tightly, you were meditating, finding inner calm. It seemed wrong to disturb you. I was waiting. What's the matter, Mr. Natsume? You seem different somehow today. Why, naturally, that's because I've attained spiritual enlightenment. The path of literature, you see, is a journey to discover one's own death. Or such like. That's the sort of morning conversation I was hoping for. That's why I had my eyes shut. I missed the signs, I'm afraid. Somehow. You'll have to forgive me. And you mustn't talk of your path leading, to, leading you to death, Mr. Natsume. That was just an example. Oh, yes, there it is. In your calm. You... You barely came to see me at all yesterday. I... I was sure you abandoned me and returned to our beautiful, long-lost homeland. We've not even been in Great Britain a week yet. Yes, well, anyway. I intend to set everything straight in court today. I'm determined to uncover the truth. I've actually reached an important decision myself. Oh? What sort of decision? I shall fill you in after the trial. Alright. It would seem... Mr. Shums isn't coming today after all. It's a very clever message, I think. My dear fellows, you must win this battle on your own merits. It's a very clear message, I think. That he's overslept again. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking too. I was about to say that. The great detective? My arch nemesis? Long may he stay away! If you ask me. Defendant, and your legal representative. The trial's about to begin. Make your way to the courtroom immediately. Today, once again, we face the Reaper. And when the Reaper stands with the prosecution, the defendant's fate is sealed. But I don't believe in that legend any more than I believe in Saseki-san's curse. The truth is hidden here somewhere, and I won't let it escape me. I have to keep believing in my client and keep fighting to the very end. That's all. February 23rd, 9.40 a.m., the Old Bailey Courtroom. We are back, guys. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. Yes, the defense is ready. Very good. And now I call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Chosen by a lot to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to proceed? Absolutely. Justice will be done. You mark my words. I feel obliged to say I feel especially ruthless on days when my hat is sitting just right. Oh, well, I wonder if you could adjust my hat for me and please be as ruthless as you like. These deserve to die if you ask me, especially gas thieves. I have no sympathy for the man at all. Look. I said it yesterday, and I'll say it again now. I don't have time for this. I've got my own problems. 
Oh, may the Lord show us all the light here and lead his flock to righteous verdict again today. Now, Lord Van Zeech, what can you tell us? The prosecution's report please, for the court. In relation to the theory expounded by the defense yesterday regarding the defendant's teeth. So he does have the results. Before the prosecution delivers the black news about the black tea belonging to the blacker in the, in the dock. <laughs> Pray allow me a moment to savor a liquid of a more sanguine hue. In fact, I'll defer to the good detective for the report. Here's to you, Inspector. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. As indicated by the defense, we found the bar of soap just outside the victim's window in the snow. And there was indeed a frozen reddish liquid in a little depression on the top of it. Yes, that's the tea. That's what Mr. Natsume brought with him that night. Well, the brains at the yard analyzed it, and yes, you're right, it was tea. And there wasn't a trace of strychnine or any other toxic substance in it. No poison at all? In other words, the tea that the defendant brought with him to the victim's room is innocent. That's in the clear. What a revelation! As I suspected. This makes it quite clear. The defendant- Objection! My learned friend is jumping to conclusions again. A typical Nipponese reaction. What? Yes, it's true. No poison was found. A few drops of liquid recovered from the soap in the window ledge. But, what logic is that? Would you take a drop from the Thames and conclude that the water in the ocean isn't salty? My word! The water in the ocean is extremely salty, Council. Oh, lag. Exactly. Unfit for drinking, just as the victim's tea was in the nine question, as the court has already learned. Heard, sorry. Bitter was the precise word from the lips of Mr. William Shamspear whom the prosecution now calls back to the stand. Oh boy. Very well, I will uphold the prosecution's request. Mr. Shamspear. Yes, it sounds like we're going to have another confrontation with our theatrical friend. Bailiff, show Mr. Shamspear to the stand. Mr. William Shamspear, the victim of this despicable crime. Oh heaven, oh hell, do you command me to remember? Forsooth, twas I, Shamspear, did have a belly full of foul fluid given in mine innocence. Yes, but as was revealed in yesterday's proceedings, the witness is not as innocent as we have perhaps first been led to believe. By using bars of soap such as this, he has been stealing gas from the supply company, yes. One may smile, and smile, and be a villain. Forsooth, twas I, Shamspear, did have a room full of the sweet field given. That's right, fellow jurors, don't forget, this man is a rotten thief. I haven't forgotten. Kept all that about the ice court to tiny secret, didn't you? You should have owned up sooner. Arrest him, I say. Arrest him at once, and let him feel the sting in my tail. Oh, indeed, by dint of vile and cowardly means have I plotted to further mine own ends, I confess. Thou wouldst not pardon my sins, of that I am sure. If you acknowledge your wrongdoing, what exactly are you doing here? Cowards die many times before their deaths. And for a coward such as I, death be well deserved. But, would it that a still greater crime pass it unpunished? For lo, the hairy-faced gentleman of farther east than Verona did contrive to poison me. Objection! But there was no poison in the tea found in your room. The police have attested to that. What the defense would assert as an inconsistency will quickly be cleared out by the witness's testimony. Is that not so, Mr. Shamspear? Verily, my liege, I would most gladly speak. Very well, let the witness testify to explain this in inconsistency. Tell the court why it is that the poison apparently entered your body, though none was found in the tea.
The T inconsistency. The Japanese man did come to my chamber with tea brewed in a pot. Twas in a cup alone that the wicked miscreant secretly poured his wicked poison. Was feigning distraction in our debate, near did a drop of his own drink pass his lips. When he departed by and by, I did use the tea that remained in his cup to make my coins of ice. Thus, tis no surprise that the poison be not found in the tea I did pour into the moans of soap. The poison was slipped into the cup after the tea had been poured. The normal way for a poison to be administered in my experience. Quite. Otherwise, it would be a disaster if the po poisoner were to mix up the cups for instance. But no poison bottle was found at the scene. Because, quite simply, the Nipponese took the bottle back to his own room. The absence of a vessel containing the poison only becomes problematic when considering suicide. Ugh. I knew that. By now, it should be perfectly clear. A bar or two of cheap soap is wholly insufficient to wash the deep stains of guilt from the accused's hands. Ugh. Sirs, madams, tis true that I, Shamspear, be a common thief of gas. But, but, listen here, ladies and gentlemen. Wherefore would I lie? Verily, I have no cause. I have naught to lose. Well, I do declare. Thank you for your testimony, witness. Counsel, proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. My go now? Okay. Hold on a second. I actually want to check out, um... The court record. I want to check out the teacups. Teacups used by Mr. Shamspear and Mr. Natsume, green line. Okay. And should be able to. It's clean. This is the teacup from which Mr. Natsume was drinking. Yes, unlike the other one, the inside of the cup is completely clean. I suppose he must have drunk the contents before the tea had a chance to leave a mark. I always gulp it down too. Sorry, Mr. Narahodo. Well, if you just sip it a little by little, it goes cold. Clearly, I shall have to instruct you in the proper way to make, take tea. The details of the pair of teacups have been updated in the court record. See, that makes sense now. Alright. I'm glad I checked that then. Cool. Alright. Alright, let's get this thing out of the way. The Japanese man did come to my chamber with tea brewed in a pot. It was in my cup alone that the wicked miscreant secretly poured his wicked poison. With spinning and distraction on our debate, near did a drop of his own drink pass his lips. I would like to... Present this. Objection! You claim that Mr. Natsume didn't drink a drop of tea on the night in question. But that's impossible. How, how, how? Choplogic? What is this, you darky clad fiend? The two teacups from the scene, one used by the victim and the other by the defendant, have a clear difference between them, one that represents incontrovertible proof. Incontrovertible? That word, guys. <laughs> what difference? Look at the inside of the cups, just here. There's a clearly visible ring. Yes, a tea ring. Commonplace enough. Indeed, such stains occur all too readily when one leaves tea in the cup for a while. And yet, Mr. Nasimi's cup has no such ring. Good lord, you're right. It's completely clean. And prithee, sir, what maketh thou of it? Exactly what Mr. Nasimi told the court yesterday, the Japanese saying he quoted. Drink. Tea. While it's hot. That's right. Yes. The jittery Mr. Natsume was true to his usual self that night and drank his tea in no time. Uh. If, as you claim in your testimony, he didn't touch a drop of his tea. A ring would have developed on the inside of his cup as well after the several hours the tea was left standing. But, 
Uh, um... In short, Mr. Shakespeare, you clearly lied to the court. Get... Get thee to a nunnery! Objection! As a rule, I fill my hallowed chalice up to seven times during any one trial. You might want to keep that information to yourself. Yet on occasion, tedium distracts me and I pour more times than I intended until the bottle is dry. Your drinking habits are fascinating, but irrelevant. On the contrary, they illustrate the fickleness of human memory. To William Shakespeare. Yes, my liege. Though you previously stated that you made the coins of ice from the leftover tea in the accuser's cup, could it be that you were perhaps mistaken? Eh? Could it be that, yes, perhaps there was some tea remaining in the small teapot left at the scene? A fact that had vanished from your memory until now? Faith, my liege, thou art the magician. For verily, tis as though thou hast seen them with thine own eyes that night. What? Forsooth, I was mistook. I did plan to use the tea from the Japanese fellow's cup, but lo, when I looked, twas empty. And thus did I use the dregs that festered in the teapot as my leash did suggest. Objection! And you've just suddenly remembered now that you made a mistake before? Are we supposed to believe that? Objection! People me people's memories are imperfect, my learned friend, which is why we rely on evidence instead. But in any case, it makes no difference. The victim's most recent testimony tells us two things of note. Firstly, that the poison was put into the victim's teacup only. And secondly, that the spoiled cup was not the source of the insipid ice coins that have bewitched this court. Hmm. The prosecution makes a fine summary of the facts. Furthermore, the testimony remains valid and in full support of the established facts. In other words... Uh-oh. Here we go. The, inconsist the inconsistency claimed by the defense simply does not exist. No! Oh. What does this mean then? I do declare it means there's no issue, Ep. Apart from the bit about thieving gas, obviously. My lords, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I do solemnly swear. After I did dine at the Grub's Grubbery Ale House that night, nothing passed my lips but the black tea given me by the Japanese whose back be stooped as slow as death. And on what did you dine, sir? Why, I did partake of my favorites, a broth as would be called soup and a leaf as would be called salad. As insalubrious as a menu as the establishment where it was served, but you gods will give us some faults to make us men. Willingly would I suffer what punishment to seem fit to serve a wicked thief of gas. But, I pray ye wise and noble fellows near forget the simple truth. That being one thing, and this be another. Jurors all, your humble servant Shakespeare doth entreat you. Punish the Japanese fellow for his sins. My lord! If I may speak, my lord. Yes, Mr. Foreman. I believe we may have been duped by that rotten defense lawyer. Oh, here we go. By me? I do declare you may be right. We all know the waif there was making coins of ice to keep himself warm. But this lawyer lad, if he's stealing gas, he deserves a dose of poison, huh? He's been leading us up the garden path. That's what he's been doing. I really never said anything like that. But what we just heard from the victim there has opened our eyes again. We've reached a decision this time, and we won't be swayed from it. The court acknowledges the position of the jury foreman, and will duly hear the jury's findings. What? No! You, you can't yet! Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your decisions now. Guilty! 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 Guilty. Oh, come on, guys. We gotta do this dance again. I hereby declare the jury to be in, in one accord. 
Oh, happy day. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> How is this happening? My lord, the defense asserts its right to carry out a summation examination. Very well, the court opposes the defense's right. Typical. My learned friend is unable to accept the obvious truth. This trial will therefore enter its second submission examination immediately. Jurors, the courts call upon each of you to state the grounds upon which you find the defendant guilty of the crime which he is charged. Right, judicial findings. The jurors' contentions. I'm a man of logic, me, and having considered all the evidence, the defendant must logically be guilty. I do agree that the gas is far too expensive. I can quite understand why the man would want to avoid paying. The stuff explodes and it can poison you. It's absolutely lethal gas is. Gas doesn't come for free. It costs a fortune to deliver it around the city and maintain the pipes. Truth be told, the tea my wife serves up for me is a little sketchy at times. If nothing else past the victim's lips that night, there's no other explanation, is there? Hmm, I do feel that perhaps personal opinion about gas and its supply has influenced decisions somewhat. But never mind. No, no, you really should mind. The truth is, our counter-argument wasn't as unassailable as we'd hoped. That Mr. Shakespeare was poisoned, there can be no doubt of that. Then how are we supposed to turn this around? I think we need to establish the method by which Mr. Shakespeare was actually poisoned. Our only hope is to demonstrate that to the court incontrovertibly. That word, guys, is going to be hard. I'm going to mess it up from time to time. But, but that's surely almost impossible at this stage. If we don't manage it, though, Mr. Natsume will, will be found guilty. No delays, counsel. Proceed with the summation examination. Alright, it's go time. The defense is rebuttal. Man of logic. And considered all the evidence, the defendant must be logic must logically be guilty. I do agree that gas is far too expensive. I can quite understand why the man would want to avoid paying. The stuff explodes and it can poison you. It's absolutely lethal, gas is. Gas doesn't come for free. It costs a fortune to deliver it around the city and maintain the pipes. Can we please refrain from all this talk of gas? There's an all-out attack on their way here, in case you hadn't noticed, against my company's gas. Am I supposed to sit there and take it? Am I? Sit here and take it? I don't think so. She's really buzzing now. All I've heard about our wonderful fuel is explosions and poisoning. What about electricity? What about getting electrocuted? What about that? A little explosion here and there is nothing in comparison. Any explosion could hardly be described as nothing, madam. Nevertheless, the death of your gas is deplorable. My point exactly. But the gas thieves aren't even the worst of our enemies. We have far more devious reprobates to contend with on a daily basis, you know. More devious? Who, madam? Other gas companies, of course. Other gas companies. Not quite what I was expecting. Wait. We generate gas we deliver to our customers fair and square. Indeed, nobody's questioning that, madam. Altamont is an exemplary gas company. But there are other unscrupulous gas unscru wow. Unscrupulous <laughs> gas companies here in London that don't even have any gas at all. What? But if they don't have any gas, how do they go about selling it to people? You would think it possible, would you? But they steal our gas, you see, and sell that. They steal your gas? How on earth is such a thing possible? Gas companies like ours deliver gas to people's homes via a network of pipes. But these devious reprobates secretly disconnect our pipes and divert our gas into their own rotten pipes. Then they make a contract with the household supplied by those pipes. They take money for the precious gas that's rightfully ours without, without us even knowing. They're diverting gas into their own pipes illegally. What a brazen form of theft. When we visit customers' houses to collect the money from their meters, we always have to check whether or not one of these devious companies has been up to its tricks. And now, someone wants me to look around. Hi there, dude. What is up? 
Excuse me. Do you have something to say about that, Jerry number three? Oh golly, you mean me? I'm I'm terribly sorry. I was just thinking to myself. I really did catch him off guard there. Thinking about what the lady next to you was saying, correct? Well, yes. I just got a little riled about it recently, you see. Go on. An ultimate gas worker visited my house the other day to investigate the pipe work. We need to ask for your cooperation while we carry out a secret check of your property, sir, the fellow said. So I let him in. And do you know what he did? I'm uh, afraid I have no idea. Please tell us. He proceeded to take one of my lights off the wall. Then he grabbed the exposed mouth of the pipe and started blowing into it. What do you think you're doing, young man? You're giving away company secrets there. Oh, please. Everybody knows, but it was very nearly the death of me, I can tell you. What do you mean? I'll explain if you don't mind. As I said before, these unscrupulous other gas companies connect their customers to our pipe network. Yes, but how does blowing into the pipes come into it? Obviously, there's gas in the pipes, and it's a fairly low pressure. By blowing air through the pipe, you can make the pressure drop temporarily. And if you do that, any lights connected to the same pipe will flicker for a moment. Ah, I see. In other words, if upon blowing into the pipe, the lights of an adjacent property that has no contact with your company flicker, you can know that these devious scoundrels have been meddling with the pipes. Exactly, my lord. That's it in a nutshell. It's the reason why we have teams of workers going around neighborhoods to investigate which lights flicker. The trouble is, the particular worker who came to my house didn't know the strength of his own breath. He blew down the pipe with, his all, with all his might, and you can guess what happened, can't you? Well, if you blew hard then... Wait, you mean... That's right, the lights didn't just flicker, they went out. Along with the stove, gas started pouring into the house. What a disaster! The gas company must have been interpret interrupted briefly because the man blew too hard so the flames went out. I'm afraid I yelled at the fellow. Are you trying to kill us all, I said? So by disconnecting a lamp and blowing into the exposed gas pipe, it's possible to extinguish lamps and stoves connected to the same network of pipes. And then, when the gas starts flowing again, it just silently seeps into the room. Mr. Narajodo, I think perhaps... Yes, this is almost certainly the clue that we've been hoping for. Juror number three, the defense requests that you amend your statement to include that information. Oh, well, if you like, I don't mind. Well, I do. That's our... Like I said, madam, it's widely known already. Very well, juror number three, you will amend your statements accordingly. Yes, my lord. Although I'm not really sure what the point of all this is. Blow too hard into a gas pipe and you extinguish everything in the house, and then you're in real trouble. Okay, see now, I definitely have to. Hold on a second, uh-huh. Wrong one, I'm gonna pit. Up, up, go back. You, and I think I remember the old man saying, If nothing else passed the victim's list that night, there's no other explanation, is there? Okay. Objection! Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious! To whose statements do you refer, counsel? Jury number six. Did you hear what jury number three just said? Eh, what? Yes, of course. I... I heard him mumbling about something or other. There is another explanation here, I believe. Something besides Mr. Natsumis T did, in a manner of speaking, pass the victim slips in the night in question. What? What explanation? I wonder, did the police check the mouth of the gas pipe feeding the wall light at the scene? To see if there were any traces of poison there? I was curious to see what your floundering would result in this time, but the mouth of a gas pipe? Scotland Yard have enough to do without exploring such irrelevance. What a piece of work is a man. What are you trying to say, Mr. Shamspear? What speakest thou? Prithee, is it not strange and strange? That is what I say to thee, sir. I thought it had been quite clear, but let me put it another way. 
The strickening could have been on the mouth of the gas pipe that feeds the wall lamp in your room. And that is how the poison came to enter your body. Good! Good lord! Alright guys, I'm gonna have to end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. When we come back, we're gonna conclude part two of this trial.